Isaac Newton had discovered the laws of motion while being confined at his family farmhouse after being sent back from Cambridge during the epidemic known as the Great Plague of London in the year between 1665 and 66. Coincidentally, in this course, you are learning Newton's laws of mechanics after being confined at your home during the ongoing global pandemic caused by the coronavirus. However, it took Newton almost 20 years to polish the mathematical framework that he developed and finally in 1687 he published his famous book Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica in english it would be called mathematical principles of natural philosophy as you know the first law states that a body continues to move with a constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force and the second law states that if an external force f acts on a body with fixed mass m then the resultant acceleration a vector is given by f equal to m times acceleration vector a as you see it here the statement of the third law says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so if you have two particles then the force on particle 2 due to particle 1 is equal and opposite on the force on particle 1 due to particle 2 or as you see it here f12 is equal to minus of f21 as a vector equation you may have seen it earlier that if the external force f is set to 0 in the newton's second law of motion then it implies that m times dv dt is equal to 0 which using the rules of calculus then implies the velocity vector v is a constant vector this result leads one to ask the question does newton's second law imply the first law if your answer is yes then it would imply that newton simply missed to recognize this so instead of giving three laws of motion newton should have given two laws so the answer to this question is resoundingly no newton's second law does not imply newton's first law in order to understand this point more clearly let us consider the fact that there are reference frames where there could be motion of a body without being acted upon by an external force such frames are known as the non inertial frames and i am pretty sure you may have seen such a frame an accelerating car is an example of the so called non inertial frame you may have seen that a hanging doll inside an accelerating car moves without being acted upon by an external force clearly newton's laws are not valid inside an accelerating car in newton's laws of motion the role of first law is to define the so called inertial frame of reference on the other hand second law makes the quantitative prediction for example a potential second law could have been f vector is proportional to m times a square times a cap where a is the magnitude of the acceleration vector whereas a cap is the unit vector along the acceleration direction even this second law would have implied v equal to constant vector if there were no external force so this is clearly compatible with first law the fact the f equal to ma is picked out by the observation that says that the force and acceleration are proportional to each other rather than anything else in summary in order to remove the confusion the newton's first law of motion should be read as you see it here that is in a given frame of reference if a body moves with constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force then the frame is called inertial frame of reference 
This statement of first law removes the possible source of confusion. On the other hand, the statement of the second law should be read as in an inertial frame of reference, acceleration of a body with fixed mass m which is being acted upon by an external force is given by f vector equal to m times the acceleration vector. Let us now consider an example. A truck is uniformly accelerating with 5 meter per second square acceleration along negative x axis. Find the acceleration experienced by a ball which is kept on the floor of the truck and as seen by the truck driver. As you see in the diagram, let us denote the truck driver as O prime, whereas an observer on the road as O. The position of the ball with respect to the driver is given by X prime, whereas with respect to the observer on the road, position of the ball is given by X. Similarly, position of the truck driver with respect to O is given by Xt. So therefore, x is equal to, as you see it here, xt plus x prime. Let us note that the truck is accelerating, which implies the truck is a non-inertial frame. Therefore, the second law of motion cannot be applied in the frame of the truck driver. On the other hand, with respect to the observer on the road O, there is no external force that is acting on the ball. Therefore, Newton's second law for the ball is given by m times d2x dt2 equal to 0. Now, using the expression of x in terms of xt and x prime, we can express the acceleration d2x prime dt2, which is seen by the truck driver, is given to be negative of d2xt dt2, that is the acceleration of the truck. Therefore, with respect to the truck driver, the ball would appear to be accelerating with 5 meter per second square acceleration. Let us consider another example. Find the acceleration of a freely falling particle inside a lift as measured by an observer who is also located inside the lift. The lift is moving upward with a constant acceleration given by a vector against a constant gravitational field g vector. So as you see in the diagram, the lift is accelerating. Therefore, the observer inside the lift is a non-inertial frame of reference. So the second law is not valid for the observer inside the lift. On the other hand, with respect to the observer outside the lift, the particle is freely falling under gravity. Therefore, Newton's second law is m d2x dt2 equal to minus of mg. From the diagram, x equal to xl, the position of the lift, and x prime, which is the position of the ball with respect to the observer inside the lift. Now, after simple algebra, we can see the acceleration of the ball with respect to the observer inside the lift is given by minus of g plus a vector. Let us now consider a small variation of the previous problem so that a freely falling particle inside a freely falling lift in a constant gravitational field G appears to be moving with a constant velocity with respect to an observer inside the lift. So as you see in the diagram, the position of the ball with respect to an outside observer X is given by position of the lift XL plus position of the ball with respect to the inside observer, say x prime. With respect to an outside observer, the particle is being acted upon by gravitational force. Therefore, the Newton's second law for the particle can be written down as m times d2x dt2 equal to minus of mg. Given lift is also freely falling, that is d2x l dt2 is equal to minus of g vector. Clearly, the acceleration of the ball with respect to the observer inside the lift is given to be zero, which implies that v prime is constant. In summary, with respect to the outside observer, the particle is falling with an acceleration g. On the other hand, 
with respect to the observer inside the lip where the lip is also freely falling it appears that the particle is moving with a constant velocity in other words there is no force acting on the particle as seen by the observer inside the lip above implies that a freely falling frame under gravity is an inertial frame as it doesn't see the effect of gravity in other words effects of gravity can be made to disappear for some observer this observation led einstein to develop his famous theory of general relativity to describe the gravitation i hope you have enjoyed today's session in case you have a question comments or a suggestion please feel free to write them below in the comment section and if you would like to follow the physics discussion here then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel